All right, it is day 44, I think. Um, we are going to mount the solar panels today, <laughs> finally. Uh, before we do that though, we are, I have routed the fan wiring. Um, so it goes through that, through the conduit, there, down the corner, uh, down here, uh, that guy, oh, need to tuck those in, um, through there, over to here, across, and then up, and these guys will connect to the fuse box. And I also have one of the wires for soloring, solar uh, coming through that will go up into the charge controller. Um, but I don't know exactly how long that one needs to be yet, so it is still connected to the roll. And that will run up through that hole. Uh, through an entrance gland and over to somewhere over here on the roof where the top of the um, Or where the end of the solar wires are uh, Solar panels are um, Yeah, so Andy is running to Walmart to grab more electrical tape I don't know something else. So I'm working on just adding another wall to the underbed storage here um, just kind of problem solving. And Andy is working on uh, kind of the upper portion of the cabinet and how we're going to fill the gap between the top of the cabinet and the ceiling. And then just brainstorming on other build parts. All right, so this is what I've been working on over here is the Last dish wall of the bed storage. Yes. Happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this final wall. So in order to have this wall coming straight out and aligned with the flooring, um, uh, we needed to have this wall just a little bit longer, so I made a 2x2, two two, extra 2x2 two two to go there, and it was, it gets narrower at the bottom, so I cut it to match that, and if you remember from one of the very first days when we were sealing the door, we have these lovely screws coming through that are holding the wheelchair doors on, so um, I needed to drill holes in this to allow those to go into that. And then we're adding this trim piece going all the way up to cover that nastiness. Um, so I'm gonna go sand this and maybe sand that one a little bit as well. Um, and then we wanna paint that before we actually put it in. So, we have just spent some time redesigning the bed. Um, so this was all the ideas that we came up with. Um, yeah. This was because we ran into the problem yeah. of trying to hinge the bed. It was scooting the bed further and further um, toward us. And realizing that all of the trouble that it would take to, to raise the bed wouldn't really get us very much more access. Because that's all garage area. This is electrical, that's water tank, um, and we already have access to it from the aisle, so in some ways it would be redundant. So we are trying to find ways to, to not have to raise the bed, or for raising the bed to be, um, to take up the same amount of space as leaving it down. Um, we were also trying to figure out how the bed matches with um, curtains and seams with the living room. So, do you want me to just run through these ideas? Yeah. Um, instead of trying to get the curtains to go up the up the side, uh, we're gonna do walls that have curves at the top that fit the um, that fit the curve of the ceiling and possibly have curtains going in front of them. But 
Um, this solved some structural issues. We talked about hinging the bed only halfway, uh, halfway down the middle and then uh, forward. So it would hinge, start hinging here and come up rather than the whole bed coming up. But we already have good ways to get access to this front cabinet anyway. So we're not going to hinge the bed. We talked about moving the electrical to on top of the water tank because um, that's a very inaccessible spot. But we're going to put a door over the water tank so that we can reach in and access all that spot. So that pink area right there is going to turn into a door that we can reach into all of this section. We had considered making that a drawer, but then we wouldn't be able to get to that little um, dead spot at the, this one right, the here. right. Um, for getting access to this stuff on the right, we considered U-shaped rollers, kind of a little um, pull-out cabinet on a... Um, like a pocket set. pantry. Yeah. That are in RVs. We also considered putting that on drawer slides instead of wheels. And we ended up just leaving the back one with a door for access to the electrical because that's going to be very infrequent. And then um, two drawers in this front front storage area. And the propane that we were going to put back there, we have been convinced that we will put it underneath the bus now. <laughs> uh, this cabinet has a cross brace in it that was based on the propane that we're going to remove. We talked about moving the fuse box to the kitchen and repurposing the second um, yeah. storage cubby, but we're going to leave yeah. it where it is. Um, and then to get access to the electrical from uh, the top, we're going to have our, our bed slats. Our, they're going to have a seam. So we'll be able to just lift out all the seams at once. We'll scoot the mattress kind of up, up out of the way and then pick up all the slats and set them somewhere else so that we can service the batteries or any of the electrical from the top in addition to the front. Although we're hoping that that will be never. Yeah, yeah. very, very infrequent if ever. Yeah. So these are Andy's <laughs> notes that he took with little pictures. And I circled the ones because yeah. our discussion just was going all over the place from curtains to bed to storage to electrical. So yeah. this is how we kind of kept everything Kept track of everything, and then at the end we went back through and circled the ones that we're actually going to implement. And it got really hot today, so we didn't do solar. So we're going to do solar tomorrow morning early um, to get that done in not the hottest part of the day. Yep.